The trouble with steam pumps part 5. A south of engines large duplex steam pump, a common mistake and a steam test. The pump is back together. All I need to do now, apart from clean the top like this, is trim off the gaskets. And really I could do with a small craft knife for this job. I must buy one. But nevertheless, the large Stanley knife box cutter did the trick. Hang on a second, I'm just counting. Yes, I've still got all my fingers. Everything feels very free on the pump, so I fitted the airline and I'm now opening the valve. And nothing's happening. The pump only seems to work when I give it a push, and the last thing I want is a power-assisted hand pump. I know the valve rods are in the correct place because before I started adjusting them, I made sure that the valves inside the steam chest both moved the same distance over the ports. Suddenly, self-doubt and indecision set in. I checked one of the operating arms to make sure the bolt went through the spacer, and it did. And as that was OK, I just reassembled it. So what is the problem, I wonder? Everything seems to feel OK, but how can I put it? The piston rods seem to feel a bit springy. This part of the steam pump setup is incredibly critical, so I messed around for a while with the valve adjustment. And after messing around for a considerable amount of time, it didn't really make much difference. I wondered if it was a lubrication situation. And to test this, I removed the steam pipe and injected some steam oil via the globe valve into the steam chest. Now I'm refitting the pipe to the globe valve, and when I admit some compressed air, it's still not right. Again, if I push the piston, it comes back the other way. This was quite puzzling, because before I dismantled the pump, it wasn't working well, but it was working. Now it doesn't work at all. I think I'll take up another hobby, because I'm obviously no good at this. And here we go again, it's deja vu time. Using my small nut spinner, I'm loosening every nut on top of the steam chest, followed by removing every nut from the top of the steam chest by hand, and trying really hard not to drop any of the nuts on the floor. This sequence, by the way, is running at double normal speed. With the steam chest cover removed, I have a look in the steam chest and it looks all right. But it isn't. Before you dismantle anything, it's a good idea to take a picture of the parts before you dismantle them. And it's very easy now, most people have mobile phones, fitted with high quality cameras. Take a look at the image on screen, this is the current state of the slide valves. Then take a look at this image, which is a still taken from a previous episode before I dismantled the pump. I thought I'd put the valves back the right way around, it looked logical to me. But I'd managed to completely ignore the markings on the driver blocks and the valves. In this image, I didn't initially see the two dots on the valve at the top of the picture because it was obscured by some oil. On the clip I used to print out, it's clearly visible. All I need to do now before replacing the cover is to check the valves are in the right place. And now, just for a change, I'm trying to give this habit up. I am retightening the nuts on the studs of the steam chest cover, followed by connecting the steam pipe. I know it's going to work now, so I'm just having a play with the valve setting. The pump is making this loud knocking noise because at the moment it's pumping air. For a given input of pressure, when the pump runs at its fastest and smoothest, I would think that that is where the valve setting needs to be. The best example of one of these pumps I've ever seen was built by a good friend of mine, a man called Roger Kroll. When Roger built one of these pumps, he was at the time a professional engineer anyway. And that is a definite advantage. Roger's pump sounded just like a steam locomotive. And I'm going to try and get this one to sound the same. It will only have the steam locomotive sound if the valve setting is perfect. The setting isn't perfect yet. Here I'm pumping water into the boiler against about 50 pounds per square inch and it's filling the boiler but a little bit slowly and the pump is not making the right noise. This setting's not so bad though. I always remember to oil these things because they will wear out very quickly if you don't. Oiling the top end of the mechanism can be done when it's running but I needed to stop it to oil the bottom end. Health and safety warning, it's not a good idea to oil these things when they're running anyway. These are not Mamod or Willesco engines, these are proper steam engines and they are very powerful and they bite. So please be careful. One of the purposes of this valve adjustment is to reduce the travel if you need to, as shown here. There is another problem though and I think I know what it is. The valves on this engine are prone to sticking. They're not ball valves, they're like poppet valves. I lifted off the water chest to have a look. There are eight valves, 
four for the water inlet and four for the water outlet. And in the case of this pump, two of the water inlet valves were stuck fast. The valves have a screwdriver slot in the end of them, so you just rotate them and they're free. Time now for a steam test. There's plenty of water in the boiler. I've turned on the gas supply and lit it. After a very short while before any steam was raised, I opened the valve at the bottom of the displacement lubricator and as you see, a bit of water came out followed by a lot of oil. So I closed the valve, refilled the lubricator and here I'm replacing the cap. For general steam engine running, I would open the valve on these type of lubricators one and a half turns. But steam pumps are notorious for gulping the oil. I will monitor the oil usage during the run. And if it is excessive, I will close the valve a little bit. In order to allow the pump to fill the boiler, I'm blowing down the water gauge, which gets rid of some of the water. When I set the position of the valve just right, the water trickles out in a steady flow into my water bottle. Time to see if the pump works using steam. I've opened the valve fully, the pump immediately starts to work. There's quite a lot of condensing going on, but even with this amount of movement, it's pumping water into the boiler quite well. After a while though, I did have to disconnect the pump from the inlet check valve because the boiler soon became completely full. In this clip, I've connected a piece of silicone rubber tubing to allow the water back to the water bottle from whence it came. And while the pump's working a bit faster, it's time to check the displacement lubricator. I'm about to open the valve at the bottom of it and look, a lot of water's coming out. As I mentioned earlier, steam pumps do tend to gulp with displacement lubricators. I refilled the displacement lubricator and carried on. It's running quite well, but the adjustment is not 100% yet. And to illustrate this, I'm going to show you a clip of the pump that my friend Roger built. And that's it for this episode. Stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. It sounds like a locomotive. It does, yeah. yeah. We've got to use valve with them. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.